Welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show. Yes, this week we decide is mountain biking in a golden era or was it better back in the 90s heyday? We challenge that by looking at some classic bikes and some of the flagships of today in a retro versus tech modern deep dive. Oh, nice. Uh, plus, we've also got photographic proof that Aaron Gwynn is retiring from World Cup downhill to do bicycle ballet. That's pretty big news. Also, a big announcement from one of the world's best bike riders in the shed later on. We've got some proper but cool entry level tech from this new Orbea hardtail, and we react to Rob Warner coming out as an e bike. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing where we go this one, Neil. <laughs> well, Martin, we've got over 60 years of experience, can you believe it, in mountain biking, so we must have a position on the retro versus modern thing. Uh, what about banger moments and banger bikes to come? Yeah, well, banger moments definitely to come, but are there banger bikes that can define the moments? I'm not so sure, but there are big moments still to come, that's for sure. That's, yeah, like the whole sport and the racing, it's always exciting every year, but what about the iconic bikes? Will a brand new bike ever pull at the heartstrings quite like a retro bike? Right, later in the show, Martin, you'll be chatting to Chris Acker, getting his big announcement, but also getting his opinion on the retro versus modern bling. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a difficult question this week. Can mountain biking really live up to its illustrious past? Well, if we're talking strictly about tech, about the bikes, they absolutely smoke the old ones. The bike's so much better now. Geometry, one by drop post, wheel sizes, electronic gears, don't even need those, but the bikes are just so much better nowadays. They really are, that is true, they're technical wonders. But the big question is, are they the creative pieces of art that some of these retro bikes have become? Now, I was thinking this because the other day when we were at Trailhead filming a video, um, it's a fantastic shop in Shrewsbury uh, where you grew up. Yeah. Um, and on the wall there, they had this amazing Klein attitude in Gator Fade, it looked Incredible. I literally just stared at it for about an hour. Um, Sandy, who owns Trailhead, has lovingly restored that bike. It's got a legit paint job on it. It looks absolutely amazing. And it just got me thinking, Neil, in 30 years from now, are we really going to be hanging one of these modern bikes on our wall like a piece of art? Well, they were very special bikes back then, and expensive back then anyway. But I guess the, com the direct comparison is my latest bike, my newest Orbea Occam uh, LT that I've just done. And I've also made this custom, so on the Orbea Mayo thing, you can choose your paints. I've got it raw carbon matte, gold stickers. It's exactly how I want it. I love it. And would I hang on my wall in 30 years time? Maybe. <laughs> I, I don't agree. Are you, what I'm saying, are you seriously saying to me that someone's going to come into your house in 30 years time and go, oh my God, Neil, no way. You've got a 2022 Orbea Occam on your wall. I don't know. It's like the, the, it's like nostalgia. Nostalgia's great. It's not as good as it used to be. There's my joke. Love it. Um, but it's because we grew up mountain bike and those bikes at the time we lusted after and now we're old enough we can afford them. We think, oh, I'll have that. So is that, have we shuffled along and now the, the kid who buys your bear Occam now in 30 years time goes, oh my God, that was the bike that I dreamed of and maybe didn't get because he couldn't afford it at the time. Get your point, get your point. You're saying that you had an Orbea Occam, you might have an Orbea Occam on your wall because you loved it, nostalgia. But what I'm saying is neither of us have, have ever had a Klein. But we'd put a Klein on a wall because the bike has become iconic and it's just beautiful. Um, and I'm not sure that a bike these days could handle it. I, I actually agree. I think it's kind of like the classic cars. You lusted after them and they're a beautiful piece of artwork, like a, a classic Yeti or dare I say the word Cannondale. Uh, yes, they were a beautiful pieces of kit, and I guess if you can find an immaculate one, I would have it now. So it's hard yeah. to compare those old bikes. Anyway, you'll be chatting to uh, uh, Chris Ackery in a minute. Yes. Get his opinion, but first to Tom with the news. What's up, everyone? So much news, so little time. Only headlines this week. Let's go. First up, Jared Graves, who after a 20-year elite career is finishing up on top with a national title win in the short track cross country. With 14 years of racing for Yeti under his belt, he'll be settling into a new role as the Yeti Fox team performance coach. Anton Cooper and Sammy Maxwell have clinched wins in the New Zealand National Cross Country Championships, and George Brannigan and Jess Blewett have done the same in the downhill. Christian Regal has signed for Specialized, bringing his signature BMX style to dirt on the big bikes. Toff is definitely looking forward to his inaugural edit. There's also a new KTM Vittoria XC team with Lena Garolt, Maxime Lort, Matthias Guy, and Tatiana Turna. A new team to Enduro also, Raw Bikes and the Level 9 Gravity team composed of Torben Drach, Chris Durkham, Helen Weber, and David Hovath. 
Also, Jenny Risford and her Team 31 will be riding on Ibis bikes for the next few years. It was Red Bull Valparaiso Serra Abajo last weekend with some slight tweaks to the course. The racing was closer than ever. Between first place and last, there was less than 30 seconds. Between first and second though, just four hundredths of a second, with Pedro Ferreira just clinching it from the downhill urban specialist, Thomas Slavic. A few new bits of tech for you now. Ride Concepts have launched their 2022 collection with the new Talak shoe with D3O in the insoles and three different levels of grip. Pivot have released a new bike to the lineup, the Shadow Cat, which immediately wins the sickest new bike name of the week award. 140 travel in the rear, 160 up front, 27.5 wheels, relatively short, steep and lively, which makes a difference. Nice short chain stay and live valve compatibility. Eminent Cycles have also released the Haste, 29 inch wheels, longer, lower slacker for enduro purposes, a linkage plate changed between 140 and 160 of rear wheel travel and a high pivot design. There is also a new lever for the Hopetech 4s, which can reportedly provide 30% more power and Abus have just announced their new Modrop all mountain helmet. Obviously check out the tech show with Doddy and Anna for more on any of those every Wednesday on GMBN Tech. For now though, let's catch up with Toph for the sickest thing. Right, this week's sickest thing has to be this super duper technical trick from Brady Tweedy. It is a nose bonk to tail bonk to bar spin out, like pfft, head explosion. I mean like, not even is it like the most difficult thing ever, cause like if you come up short, you're gonna like go over the bars. If you miss it, you would like anti-pop. And then you're gonna hit your back wheel, but like if you push into that, you might just like loop out if you miss it. Or case it and go over the bars. Like super duper difficult, but also what an absolute genius for even like thinking that one up. But yeah, go check out Brady Tweedy. He's one of the sickest up and coming riders right now. Yeah, that's my sickest thing this week. Time to go back to the shed. What a treat. Christopher Ackrig on the Dirt Shed Show. We've had you on the Christmas show before. Yeah, it's a while ago. That's a long time ago, but we've never had you on the Dirt Shed Show proper. How does it feel? Does it feel good? It's good in here, isn't it? It feels something. It's not too bad, it's not too bad. <laughs> Man, we've got a big announcement, but we're not gonna do that yet because I wanna get your views because you've been riding for such a long time. So Chris has been a professional mountain bike rider for 20 odd years. A lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. So you've seen, and you're still going. That's the difference. Just about. Me and Neil, long gone. <laughs> you're still going, right? Um, so you're right in the midst of it. Like mountain biking has had its heyday in terms of the iconic bikes. That's what I'm saying today. Yeah, right? I'm saying yeah, really. those iconic bikes are hard to beat. And Neil suggested that maybe the bike he's got right now is good enough and iconic enough already to like stick on his wall. I don't believe that. What do you think? Think about one of them old bikes. Really yeah, beautiful. I was saying to you earlier though, like when I went to the Malvins, I didn't go anywhere else but like, you know, the retro stuff. I'm like I'm a retro type of person. I like retro bikes. What would be cars. your favorite retro bike? Oh, that's a question, isn't it? Do would you know the, like the Klein? The Klein the is like iconic, isn't it? Yeah. That's the one I think. It looks so different to everything else. And I think it's really where mountain bikes started to get its mojo going. Yeah, like, oh, I always remember good. like magazines from back then. You're always yeah. looking at that bike. You would. You wouldn't flick past that, would you? That's where you'd stop and go. Mm. Yeah, they're they're blooming nice. They're blooming nice. Um, I guess there's also, let's say that the retro bikes are winning here, right? And they're beating out like the modern tech bikes. Yeah, that's what we've decided. But is mountain biking about to hit a new dawn? with the e-bike. You're one of like the early exponents of, of you're one of the first people making e-bikes look good. Thank you. Like look like, look not good, cool. <sighs> like, oh they're cool. <laughs> I thought they were for our old granddads. Yeah, no, think, uh, they're cool. Yeah. I think it's already started though, hasn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's happening. It's, yeah, but it's, I think we're yeah. at the dawn of this new thing of like where you suddenly realise, we're going to talk about in the show, uh, a video of Rob Warner coming up later on. And, and in that video, you see Rob Warner going to places on a bike yeah. he wouldn't go. Yeah, well, he, what did you say? He fell in love with mountain biking. Yeah, that's yeah. a great that's video. That's pretty video. massive. Yeah. Um, and it, that, that makes me think, are we, are we at that point where people from outside the sport are, are starting to look in and see something that would do a tool that would take them to places like when we first saw a mountain bike? Like, that yeah. would, I could go yeah. up a mountain on that. Yeah, I think people will think, it, it's, making it more accessible i think yeah. to some people yeah and maybe a little bit more appealing yeah. they've probably seen some people at the side of the road struggling <laughs> and then thinking do you know what a motor yeah. seems like a good idea yeah and it just makes it so fun yeah i mean it's, so it's like i was saying earlier like off, off camera like i struggle sometimes to go down to my garage and think oh 
It's a tough choice. And that's when you know yeah. they're good. Yeah, that's it's a tough choice, good. yeah. Um, so me and Chris have done a podcast earlier on today where we talked about that a lot more, which is a lot of fun, actually. And we talked about umpteen other things. Um, so the link to that podcast is in the description down below. So head down to there if you want to hear more from us talking about all sorts of things, including what we think about e-bikes and, and each um, other. And each other. <laughs> Boy, we got into it. So check that out. Um, but for the big announcement, yeah. the big announcement, I'm so excited about this because I did this. This is my doing. I'm very proud of it. The Global Bike Festival is happening very soon. It's, 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 it's coming up in June and we're going to go out to Sailback and ride. And guess who I've taught to come along and ride with you guys if you come? Only Chris Ackrig! <laughs> Oh my God, it's going to be so good, isn't it? We've been it's, deciding what we're going to do. Yeah. So talk us through what you're planning a group of people come and do with us. Yeah, I think we've sort of been on the fly a little bit. We're getting it. We're getting so, it We're getting there now. Yeah. So I think we're going to take a selection of bikes. Yes. Normal bike, e-bike. Yes. Your bike. My bowhead. Yeah. yeah, bowhead. And then we're going to find a route. We're going to plan a route before yeah, everyone plan arrives. A route, yeah, wreck it. Wreck plan it. a route. We're going to do that. And then we're going to get some little couple of little spots where we can do yes. a little bit of fun. A few little trials techniques bits it, yeah. and basically me on the bowhead chris on either his e-bike or his normal bike but i really want to see you on e-bike he can teach you some e-bike riding you come along with a sign up to it when you're in sailback and we'll go out for a ride we'll do a couple of times a day yeah jobs are good and you said tea and cake and there'll be tea and cake halfway literally exactly halfway around the course we will have tea and cakes global bike festival has got a genuine legit pro superstar one of the best mountain bikers in the world ever in my opinion chris ackrig he's going to be there thank you very much martin i take that back <laughs> <laughs> right, let's carry on with the show. Let's take a look at some hacks and bodges. Interesting guy, isn't he? Uh, right, put you on yeah. spot. Favourite rider, Danny Mack or Chris Ackery? Whoa, sugar. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you had to pick one, come on. I'd pick Chris. Oh, I'll pick Danny. That's fair. <laughs> but Chris. Oh, Jesus. Uh, ah! <laughs> God, Different styles of doing the same thing. I guess that's the cool thing about trials. Really hard to pick between those two. Okay, right, hacks and bodges. Yeah. Um, let's start with a bodge, although I don't think it's really fair to call this a bodge. Um, it just went wrong. Okay, this is from um, Hugh in Melbourne, Australia, and he said, look, check out this little list he's got in his top tube. Whoa. So he entered a 50k XC race, um, doesn't have a GPS, so he noted the climbs and the descents on a little sticker on his top tube. Whoa. But unfortunately, um, his cycle computer is not that accurate. That's the problem. So the timing started going out of sync. Tricky. And it, and it so it didn't work. Good idea, but yeah, I can see how that would go wrong, and then you just you're in. A On twenty k, he'd been all right, but fifty k by the end, it was a mess. But good try, good try. I've got a pretty cool hack here. I've done something similar. So this is from Michael. He's got two new proofs, got a Mega 297 and a Scout 27.5, big Blake fan, obviously. Uh, while stuck at home isolating, managed a little hack to honor both my awesome steeds, a custom face on the Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro. So I've done this. Nice. You can nice. tweak them using the app. Uh, I had a Super Mario Brothers screensaver on there. <laughs> Very cool, like that a lot. Um, what about this for a little bit of engineering tech? Um, this is a proper, proper. hack, proper yeah. hack from Aldis in Mexico. Uh, just using a bit of sheet metal and some screws, he's created this amazing little chain guard. Kind of looks really like nice. those holes. I suppose like that, or has he just done that with a file? I think he's done it with a, drilled them out and then filed them, but it kind of looks quite organic, doesn't it? It's oh, quite cool. Good, I like that. I quite like it. And last one, I think you'll like this, Neil. A little video here of Ashley's dropper post. Um, he found that his 175 dropper post was a bit too long. Yeah. So he's created this little wire tensioner that stops it going fully extended. So it's a good idea. And he runs it shorter. Well, I've got a bike like that, actually. My Knevo SL is too big for me. So I just have to ride along with the post slightly, which is really annoying because I have yeah. to go up and down a bit. Yeah. This is a bodge. But, <laughs> however, if you're growing, that's quite a good one because eventually yeah. it might fit you, but it's not at the moment. Good point. Good point. That's very good. Um, great hacks and podges this week. Um, if you've got a hack or a bodge, Please send it in to us, into the uh, GMBN uploader. Link is in the description down below. We'd love to see it. Um, Neil, got a favourite this week? Um, I think the Newt Proof watch thing. I, yeah. I kind of like it, it's cool. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to be sending a race top your way. Good job. <laughs> New bike announcement. 
Yep. Yes, the Orbea Honor. Look at this, aluminium hardtail. Uh, it's a beauty, You've got things like internal cable routing. Lots of sizes on this one, Neil. Yeah. Uh, smaller bikes, 27.5 wheels. Um, bigger sizes got 29, 100 mil for suspension up front. Um, it's a great looking bike. It's designed to be your first real mountain bike and budget wise, it's like thousand pounds and less for the nice. range. It's pretty hot. good. They've got a really good range, like the Laifu, which is more of their fun, longer, slacker hardtail. Yes. Slightly more expensive, but hot competition at that entry level price. So good to see, loads of good options there for new mountain bikers. To the caption contest, we've got Chopper laying down on the job. <laughs> yeah, he spent a long time putting this picture together. He was very proud of it, um, but it's very funny. Yeah. Okay, first one we've got is from Stuart Dickens, and he says, Chop's jaw literally hit the floor when he found out he'd been invited on the Dirt Shed Show. Yeah, pretty That's good. That's good, good. Um, Steve Cipalla says, Chopper had to show everyone how he missed that epic landing. <laughs> Just like that, in the middle of a workshop. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the left bop says, Chopper regretted telling Anna he prefers Doddy on Champions. No one would say that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anna's taking him out. Um, right, we've got to give away a stunt mug on this one. Hang stunt on a second. Mug. Is there still a stunt mug in the building? Yeah, we've got a stunt mug. Who are we giving it to, Neil? I uh, quite liked all of those. I did. I think I like the left bops the best. The left bop, you are getting a stunt mug. If you would like to win yourself a stunt mug next week on the Dirt Shed Show, then here is your caption contest photo. You could be winning one of these beautiful mugs Ooh. next week. Good luck. I've been on Instagram this week, Neil, looking at some things that I've liked and loved. Me too. Um, there's some cool stuff, but first up, Rob Warner has, has come out as an e-biker. Can you do that? He has come out as an e-biker. He's made a really great video actually with uh, Shimano. It's called Free Peaks. It's really cool. He kind of runs through um, his career and uh, it's, it's really interesting. It's a great video, um, but the, the whole point is to say that he has fallen back in love with mountain bikes because of e-bikes. Who'd have thought it? Uh, yeah, thought it? I love to see it. Also, Aaron Gwynn doing some moves. Is he doing ballet? Is he breaking down? said, no, he's actually, he's moving in on our territory, doing some coaching videos, although I love it. Obviously, Aaron Gwynn, legendary rider. Uh, and check out his How to Corner. It's good, actually. Yeah, it's really good. And obviously, if anyone knows, he does. Yeah. it's him. I will, so yeah. he's, he's probably got it pretty nailed. <laughs> but it does look like he's doing bicycle ballet on that thumbnail. It really does. Um, and lastly, more of a serious point. Um, I really love this post from uh, Bart Brengen's team um, for Yana Belomoyna. Um, obviously a Ukrainian rider, um, and with the invasion of Ukraine, obviously all of our thoughts are with everyone um, that's involved in that. Um, it's a terrible time, but it really makes you think someone like Yana and her teammates who are out on the, the tour, riding their bikes, but also obviously thinking very um, hard about stuff that's going on back at home. So our thoughts are with all of you. Okay, coming up on the channel, we have got some amazing videos, but just in case you missed it yesterday, um, we've mentioned it earlier in the show, we went and took over Trailhead Bicycles. Didn't we do well? It was fun. Don't, did we do well? Don't know. I don't know if we did well. well. They sold some stuff. They sold stuff. It was a great video. So if you've missed that, um, go back and check it out. It was out yeah. yesterday. It was a it was a great video and we had a great time. Also, whilst we were up in my old haunt, I took Blake and Rich to the woods and we sent our bikes off some sweet jumps. <laughs> nice. Um, and I tell you what else I'm looking forward to because we're talking about great pieces of artwork today, yeah. like that Klein and the Yeti and so on. Um, Rich has been doing his own pro paint job and he's done a video all about it, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. And I'm surprised. That. It's like the frame is upstairs. I'm surprised. Yeah. Really? It is. Do you think it's better or worse than I thought? I think it's, well, if you've said surprise and your eyebrows went up, I think it's better. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bike vault and oosh, getting them out. We're coming in hot. We really are. This Check is... out the photo. <sighs> this is amazing. This is Phil's Yeti in Wellington. Neil, that is a lovely looking bike. It's a rainy day outside, so I did what any self-respecting mountain bike would do. Sat down and stared at my bike in the garage. I did that. <laughs> That's what it needs. I wasn't sure super nice. That, but I do do that quite a lot. Uh, that is a banger bike. Was that a DVO rear shock? Whatever, it's a beautiful mm. picture of a beautiful bike. Yeah, it's very, very good. And it's um, 
quite the start. Next up, we have got Graham Stanton Switch Niner. The post. Um, this like is in Parkland. Got the maximum drop post you can ever get on that. Yeah, I like that actually. It's handsome. Misty blue. It's a handsome bike. Hope four to thirty wheels. Those are hope bits over in Australia. SQ Lab Bar, two hundred mil drop post, holding up a custom kangaroo leather saddle. How do you yeah. feel about a kangaroo leather saddle? Mike's gonna be, if it's leather, it's gotta be something. Um, it's gotta be something. It's gotta be something. We need a seat at the end of the day. <laughs> Sod the kangaroos. Right, next up, we <laughs> have got. Look at that post. I'm all about the post. <laughs> that is a lot. Uh, that's a really high post. Monty man. must have some legs on it. That's I'll a really, that. that's a really high post. Um, it's a 2018 Intense Tracer custom build. It's very nice, but the seat post. It's 240 mil. I did not know. That is a one up 240 mil dropper post. Come on, man. That's too big. Because this, uh, this is a 27, must be 27, five wheel. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, DVO front forks and rear shock. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great looking bike. <laughs> There's the bell if you want to ring it. It's nice. It's nice. Right, next up we've got Look at this art. Chris's Cro-Mag root down hardtail. Oh, I see what he's doing. My bike, my car. Yeah. The bike's worth more than the car. I uh, get it. Like it. Like it. Ah, uh, Cro-Mag Cro root down. Yeah, well, it's in Vancouver. Oh, uh, Vancouver Island. Yeah. Ride in the skinnies, no doubt. Now, Doddy wouldn't be happy because this isn't drive side, so it's not legit. It can't get a super nice. Really? No, no, he gets quite cross about it, but I think it's a good looking bike. I think it's a good looking bike. I think it's nice. Yeah, but Doddy would be down. It's like a ton of bikes. Oh, wow. Retro. We're talking about, see, this is where this is a retro bike that I look back and think, wow. Yeah. It rode see, like this crap is and my, didn't look that good. This either. is my point. I think this bike, this Trek um, was it OCLV? Y11, was it, yeah. um, the Y frame, wasn't it? Yeah. From Kevin. You RT designs are terrible. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it, it's in great condition, but this is a bit like what I think any bike from these days would be like in the future. It's, it it worked, it was used, people bought yeah. them, but was it really a moment in the sport? Well, not I would, really. I would have lost it out after that bike at the time. Yeah, but now I don't. Now exactly, yeah. exactly. You agree with me? Nice. <laughs> Massive <laughs> so nice. Bar, but say. it is a lovely retro build, so I think it's probably a su at least a super nice. Go on then. Crazy, wow. crazy. Look at that. Is, that ends. is nice. Uh, where do you start? It says Kevin's 2021 Trek slash 9.9 .9 P1 XO1 Axis. Of course it is. Mm. Uh, finished new build after waiting for new parts for months. Ooh, well, that is tough going building. Doing a custom bike at the moment must be hard. I feel Neil's going to ring a bell. Oh, well, it's got Michelin it's tires, lovely, 36 lovely volt. Is that a stock paint job? I guess it is. Looks like it's got those really fancy Revit grips. That is a spendy build with the Axis. I, I think that's a very good looking bike. Very nice. Right, Andrew next oh. with his AMP B5. AMP Research. Remember when they had the lead, uh, what do you call it? The fork on yeah. the front as well. I know what the one you mean. You know who used to ride one of these? Ed Mosley, Tracy's brother. Yeah, he exactly. rode it well. Did. He did ride it Massive well. Massive Rooks. So I had one of them, uh, not as big as that, yellow Rooks. Yeah, them. that is a very long If stem. you couldn't afford a Synchros, you got one of them. Yeah. Um, it's got it all going on. I really like those sort of like bolt on rear seat triangles. Mid, that sort of reminiscent of the Middle burn cranks. Yeah, true. Middle yeah. burn cranks, you had to have those. Yes. And a Judy SL up front. That would have been a spendy bike. Yeah, very spendy and very nice. Um, I'm going to give it a super. Very nice. Um, and we've got a lovely fatty, fatty. here. It's a Quest Flurry. Um, flurry? Flurry Not from flurry. Jeremy um, in New Brunswick, Canada. The perfect place for a place. It is. For that a looks like bike. fun, doesn't it? The, yeah. It looks like it's cold enough that the bike isn't like sinking into the snow. So you, you can yeah. bomb around. Yeah. Like the idea of that. Fully rigid as well. You don't really need a fork on it. And I love those rims. Those big sort of like smooth rims. They look beautiful. Oh, I'm going to ring it because I think it's well good. Go fun. on. Super nice. We've all got used to fat bikes. And lastly, on the bike vault this week, we've got Oliver's custom built Merino Vader. Vader in Hungary. Ah, uh, it's very nice. Uh, another custom build, yeah. Uh, I designed in bike CAD during spring. What? Wow. I ordered a custom frame, so they must do the the angles. Well, I didn't know Wow, that. that's cool. I uh, built it up myself after Christmas, and now I'm enjoying the hell out of it. It's got a 62 and a half. 
head tube angle. Whoa! Whoa! That is slack. That is slack. That uh, is it's really fair slack. to say it almost rides itself while I, while I skillfully hang on. <laughs> yeah, every turn kind of pulls you forward oh, a bit. He's also got a custom head tube badge as a finishing touch to this Sith Lord. What's well, Sith? Are they goodies or baddies, man? They are not good. Oh. They are not good. So is that but the fortunately, they have all been wiped out. Oh. They're gone. Oh, it was a long news. time ago. Was it a long, long time ago? No, the Galaxy apparently far, far it was. Away. Apparently it was. <laughs> Great bikes this week uh, in the bike vault. That last one was a super nice as well. Well done, Oliver. Um, if you've got a beautiful bike, of course you have. Send it in to us on the GMBN uploader, and it could be here next week. Getting the old bell rang for it. Get involved. Great show, um, and thanks to Chris uh, for giving us his time. It was really interesting to hear his side of the retro versus modern. Um, idea and of course if you like that chat remember I did that podcast with Chris that's up on the uh, audio boom uh, links in the description down below and also remember last week I did a podcast with Chopper Grant exactly. Chopper Fielder which is a lot of fun too so you want to check those out you can they are on Apple Spotify uh, yeah find them wherever you find your podcasts Absolutely. lovely to hear those thanks mine love the retro deep dive and we're heading into some fails and bales see you next week